Welcome to today's webinar on how AI simulations close the communication skills gap. I am Lewis Johnson. I have with me uh, Karen Jiang. Uh, Hello, everyone. So a little background. First of all, on me, I've worked in the area of artificial intelligence and education and training uh, throughout my career. I am um, also co-founder of Alelo that does a lot of work in applying AI simulations to a range of different training and education uh, problems. Uh, Karen, you, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I've been involved in um, language and communication for most of my career in various roles ranging from sales and marketing to editorial and have um, looked at this issue both from the education and academic side of the house as well as within um, workforce and in employment. And to make sure everyone is aware, uh, we at Alelo, we host a series of webinars on the future of artificial intelligence in education and training. Um, and uh, welcome you to go and uh, see some of the recordings. They're all available either from our website or on YouTube. So looking at the skill gaps in the workforce today, of course there are important skill gaps in the area of hard skills. There's big demand, for example, for statistics, uh, data science, but there also is an increasing gap in the area of soft skills, problem solving, collaboration, communication, and many people recognize this is very important. The question is how to train these skills, how to develop these skills uh, in the workforce. And within this range of soft skills, communication stands out as one of the most important ones. So there was a study that LinkedIn published last year based upon the people in their network that showed that communication skills was the biggest skill gap. In other words, the difference between the skills that uh, workers have and the skills that employers want. Also, you see here a, a results from a study of the de skills de in demand from uh, new gra uh, business school um, graduates. And again, the communication skills come up to the top as being uh, very important. We can also look at different areas of uh, divisions within companies in terms of where soft skills are extremely important and certainly customer service, human resources, sales and marketing are all areas where good communication skills are very important. But I think we also see that to succeed in the workplace today, you have to have good communication skills regardless of what sector you are in. And this is particularly important for people who aspire to leading roles within your organization. And I know, Karen, you've looked at this issue quite a bit. Would you uh, speak a little bit to it? Sure. Um, you know, not only is it a critical skill for leaders, but if you think about the way workforces operate these days, you have a lot of situations where workforces are distributed. We are not all now sitting around a table in an office having a meeting. This is an example in itself of how we communicate. If you're virtual communication over Zoom, over, over Skype, um, you know, digital forms of communication are increasingly popular now. Um, you, we are working with global workforces now. So cultural issues become very important. The ability to express yourself in a way that is understandable across cultures is important. So we have the difference. We have digital communication. We have cultural differences. We have multiple generations now working within the workforce. We have everyone from baby boomers all the way down to, to Gen Z now. And we read about this a lot in the press, how each generation has a different way of communicating. 
So we, as a leader, you need to be able to communicate across the miles, across mediums, and across generations. And if you look at, uh, particularly among leading leadership skills, what are the skills that, uh, that come to the top as being most important? And, and communication comes up again and again. And it really makes the, it's all the difference between being an effective leader and being an ineffective leader. So given how important this problem is of effective communication, you would think that there would be a lot of training solutions there that would uh, readily address it. Yet the skill gap persists, and why is that? Well, I would argue that part of it has to do with the limitations of conventional methods, of training methods for dealing with problems in um, uh, communication skills. So for example, live classroom instruction is, has problems. You don't get much opportunity to practice communicating if you're just sitting at a, uh, in the audience in a class. Also, practicing in front of peers can be embarrassing. Often, um, communication skills classes get turned into perform. Students feel like they're having to perform in front of their clear peers. And even if you are comfortable communicating, it can be somewhat intimidating if you're having to you know, make mistakes in front of other people. The alternative is one-on-one -on -one coaching, and that's great for the people who have access to it and can afford it, but it is very uh, expensive and labor-intensive. So the most common methods don't provide enough opportunity to practice and provide specific feedback in the areas where one needs to improve. And I should also mention that giving people feedback on their communication can be kind of embarrassing too. People don't like to tell other people that they are saying things in an inappropriate way. So it's, it's a difficult area to provide effective practice and feedback. And although there are um, e-learning tools that are available, um, they typically do not try to provide enough practice and feedback and not enough of the right kind of feedback that people can really use to improve. And so as a result, we just don't see the results that we would hope for in terms of lasting behavior change. And I guess this relates to, to another issue, which is that for those, you know, we all kind of assume that we know how to communicate. You know, we communicate every day. So, and we have communication habits, which may or may not be the right ones. So it's a challenge to give people opportunity to really understand where they need to improve and then get the practice that they need so that they really can change the manner in which they uh, communicate. Uh, Karen, you have any additional thoughts on, on this issue? No, I'd just make, like to make a comment, even with the current um, methodology that is so-called top of the line, which would be one-on-one -on -one coaching. And given the expense of that, that's usually reserved for only certain levels of the organization. Even a one-on-one -on -one coach is not able to fully record or to fully keep track of the areas that you may or may not have issues with. Right? They'll be listening and jotting down notes, and, but it, 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 they're humans. So they can only capture so much data and so much information. I mean, communi improving communication is a long-term process. So one needs to be consistently and constantly reminded and encouraged about areas that they need to, to improve on. And so therefore, you need the data in order to do that. Absolutely. So what's needed is, we believe, a better approach. And, and we at Alelo have been working on an approach which we actually started developing for a different type of communication problem, which is preparing uh, people, particularly military personnel, if they're going overseas, to be able to communicate more effectively with, with um, people from other countries. And this is where we at Alelo got started. We created immersive games, we call them AI simulations, where the characters in the game 
are um, can, are basically AI avatars, and you have to communicate effectively in order to succeed at the game. And, and this has had some big uh, impacts. So, uh, for example, here's a, a case study, a retired U.S. Army colonel who came to us and talked about his experience. He had tried um, uh, Alelo's Arabic AI simulation, and he liked it a lot, so that when he was taking a battalion into Afghanistan, he insisted that everybody in his battalion practice in these AI simulations. And he could see the effect that this was having on people being able to communicate with the local people. And this had uh, an impact just in terms of making progress toward peace and stability, that they were finding that the number of insurgent attacks in their region was dropping dramatically. So, so I asked Dan, well, what is it that you think was the reason for this? And he says, well, it gives you an opportunity to practice in a realistic situation so that when you experience it for real, you feel like you've already done it before. And in fact, this is something that we have continued to develop. We at Alelo have developed cultural awareness trainers for over 90 countries for much of the world. Uh, and now we have a way of providing this technology uh, to anybody, um, including people in the United States, uh, the UK, people whose native language is English, but still need to improve their communication skills to succeed um, uh, in their work. So we've developed a, a platform uh, called NSkill, and I will show it to you in just a moment. But just to understand the capability that it provides is uh, simulations with AI avatars, uh, formative assessments. So basically when you are in the simulation, you are being assessed in your communication skills as the simulation is uh, proceeding. Then you get feedback in the air in what you did right, what you did wrong, where you need to improve, and then provides personalized learning guidance. So on exercises in the particular areas where you need to improve. And then finally, because it's a data-driven approach, it, it um, generates analytics that can be used by teachers, trainers, learners, uh, as well as managers, administrators, to understand how well the uh, learning process is going. And this can help um, organizations to improve their training practices more broadly to get the um, effects that they're looking for. So we're going to show you how we apply NSkill to the problem of effective communication. But before that, we're going to talk a little bit about what are the elements, the principles of effective communication that we have tried to model and embody in our AI-based approach. Uh, and, and Karen, would you like to speak to, uh, to these, uh, these next few slides? Sure. So um, a, a professor at, at Stanford Business School, Matt Abrams, um, has done a lot of research and work around what does it mean to communicate effectively. In his research, he was working with native speakers um, and understanding that we as native speakers don't always communicate in the best and most effective way, uh, um, even though we know the language. So it, it's a question of when, you're effect, when you want to communicate effectively, you need to think fast. Things need to happen in a, at a, in a quick pace in your mind. And then it has to be uttered in a way that's intelligent uh, to, to the speaker. Both of these things happen a matter of seconds if you are confident about what you're going to say and feel good about the type of delivery that you're going to use. But in many cases, you may formulate an idea, but you can get it out in a way that is effective and, and in a meaningful, influential kind of way. But, and, 
And so this is one area where practice is really important and why we've been looking at technologies that will help give learners opportunities to, to practice and get comfortable communicating quickly. So a couple of thing, you know, points that came across in, um, in Matt's work, uh, here's, here's one of them. So I, I think we all, you know, if you've done any public speaking or you've even been in a meeting where you're trying to persuade a team or a group that your thinking or your idea or your proposal is, is best, you, you, you feel anxious. You know, I think many, many times we try to say to ourselves, oh, there's no reason to be nervous. There's no reason to be anxious. But this is something, frankly, that's unavoidable. It happens. We're, we're human. This is, this is life. So you are going to feel anxious, but you have to learn how to put that anxiety to one side and, and work with it, if you will. Um, and as, as Lewis is saying, oftentimes, practice will help with this particular issue. Another key issue that we've been looking at at Alelo, which comes from Matt Abrams, is about delivery structures. It's not enough to just know the words. You can mouth a whole bunch of words, and I'm sure that all of us have been in, in situations where somebody is just talking, talk, 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 but really not saying anything. So it's important to think about how you are delivering your message and the words that you are using. Like, what are you trying to say? Why is that important? So what? What is that meaningful? Now, now, now what, what impact does that have? Is it solving a problem or is it pointing out an opportunity? Does that lead to a solution? Does that solution have a benefit? So these are, are six things that happen and need to happen if you are going to communicate effectively, but realistically, we don't have the time to sit and say, okay, let me think about what. Hmm, okay, now, so what? Now, now what? All of this has to happen fast. And this is the challenge that we all face when we're trying to communicate in a way that's meaningful to others. Do you want to take this, Lewis? Well, yeah. So, so also, um, in order to communicate effectively, the way you express things is extremely important. And, and, and what we've observed is that often people, uh, perhaps unintentionally, express their uh, ideas and positions in a way that's not persuasive. So, so here are some examples of some use of persuasive language versus not persuasive language. So for example, you could state um, your opinion um, definitely, declaratively, I recommend that we do such and so. Or tentative, you could say it tentatively, well, maybe we could do such and so. Um, you can express yourself assertively. I believe that this is the case. Um, people sometimes will present their ideas kind of apologetically, sort of, excuse me, but I think we should consider such and so. Um, you can present your ideas as you know, declarations, let's do this, or as questions, you know, well, would you like to do so and so? Now, I think some of these, um, you know, not persuasive approaches uh, are, are, you know, people do it as a way perhaps of being polite or considerate to other people, but it can come across as being uh, um, uncertain about um, you know, what you are uh, suggesting here and therefore less persuasive. Also, the way you present uh, what you your ideas is it something that is a clear position that appears to have uh, support you know research shows that such and so as opposed to personal opinions I just think that you know this is my idea so so these are if you will um, 
language strategies that can help you to be more um, persuasive in the way you communicate. And then combined with these other structures such as delivery structures can make it so that you can get your point across and the people will follow it, understand it, and uh, believe it. So in fact, this is what we have been working on in Enskill to actually use AI to be able to analyze the communication strategies that we just talked about and be able to assess them, provide feedback automatically in realistic conversations with, with avatars. So we've used that to create um, a, um, a, a communication course. We call it uh, EPC, or Effective and Persuasive Communication, in which learners practice making structured, persuasive arguments to their managers, to coworkers, and Enskill is automatically analyzing their argument structure and their use of language and give you meaningful feedback. So as you'll see, this is really kind of a breakthrough in using AI technology to provide meaningful coaching and feedback to anybody as they practice their communication skills. So ultimately what we're trying to get to is effective communication as a habit, mm -hmm. right? Because in order, if you, and I can't remember the title of the book, but there's been a lot of research done on habits and how do you form good habits. Good habits come from consistent practice in, in some way. And generally, as Lewis has pointed out, to have the opportunity to have consistent practice in effective communication and getting the right feedback and personalized to you is frankly not possible doing it with another person. We're not capturing the data, you don't get enough practice. So what Aledo has developed is a way for you to form a habit, if you will, of positive communication. That's right. So let me now actually bring up um, the course so you can see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually going now to the Alelo SIM server website. And so anybody around the world can access and these courses uh, through a web browser, uh, either on their uh, laptop, as I'm doing here, or even on a mobile phone. And we have uh, speech technology integrated this, so you can actually practice um, communication. So I'll just um, start here, just give you a little bit of, a, of, a, of, of an introduction. So, um, we talked here about you know, one of the delivery structures of you know, present your vision of what you want to accomplish. What would the benefits of it, uh, what would those be? Uh, what would the next steps be that you propose? So learners in this module, I'm going to show you actually practice using that delivery structure. Um, at, you practice using persuasive language. You get feedback if your language is not persuasive. And then we give some warm-up exercises that focus on the particular skills. So first of all, um, using uh, uh, delivery structures in an appropriate way. So for example, uh, you know, make the case um, of, to your coworker for adopting AI-based HR tra training. So I could say something like, um, based upon my recommendation, uh, my research, I recommend that we uh, look into H, um, AI based training. And as you see, I kind of flubbed that a little bit. Let me try that again. Based upon my research, I recommend that we adopt AI based HR training. So as you see, we're getting feedback on use of the delivery structures as well as how you're pre I'm presenting my ideas. So like, well, why should we use, look at AI-based uh, uh, training? Um, uh, AI is a hot thing and it's really cool. 
well, that, that didn't do very well at all. Whereas I could say, um, research shows that for large organizations, AI-based training has lower costs than conventional classroom-based training and achieves better long-term learning outcomes. So you'll see, you see here, we're doing, it's doing some sophisticated analysis of my ideas and how I'm presenting them. Um, so this is going much farther than, you know, something like Siri or Alexa, which can answer a question. But here you're getting feedback on how well you're getting your, you're presenting your ideas across. So then we include various different types of exercises, for example, just, you know, can you recognize examples of persuasive language versus non-persuasive? So, like, I recommend is a persuasive case. I feel like is not persuasive. It will probably help not persuasive. Um, let's see, the best thing, that looks like persuasive. Something we could do. Yep, and oh, we can, yes, there we go. So what, so get people familiar with, the, with these different um, persuasive versus non-persuasive um, um, uh, learning styles, and then, um, uh, then use those in realistic examples. So here, you know, I think, um, again, if I say something like um, um, uh, research tells me that uh, AI achieves better long-term learning outcomes and it can lower costs as well. So again, it um, is able to evaluate, did I get my point across? And then did I communicate it uh, in, a, in an effective way? And I think and it's important to point out that, as you saw from the example Lewis was giving, this is not scripted canned speech. Right. Lewis was speaking it, the way that he felt comfortable speaking. The system was able to listen and record that and make an analysis of it. So unlike a lot of programs where they're teaching you to memorize, if you will, certain phrases of speech to use. This is not what this program is doing. It's pointing out persuasive versus non-persuasive language, but it's giving you the flexibility and freedom to express it in your own words, right. which I think is very important. Right. I think, you know, there are some apps out there that, for, that are communication practice that, like, will count the number of filler words or the number of ums. And, yeah, it's a good idea not to use too many filler words and too many ums. But if you focus on just your ums and not communicating your ideas clearly, then you really have not succeeded. And so we really focused um, on being able to use AI to get at really the, the, the critical skills for effective and, and persuasive communication. So with this background, I'm now going to give you an actual demonstration. So in this scenario, I am uh, supposed to present to my, um, so company leadership is concerned that their current training methods are not effective. So you'd like to make the case of using an AI-based approach. So I'm gonna present my ideas to uh, my uh, supervisor, Morton. Uh, and in this meeting also is another avatar, Travis. He is a coworker and he's actually competing for um, a position that I would like to have. So if I do a poor job in communicating my ideas, he may jump in and present his ideas, and then I've and then I've lost the floor. I'm 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 no longer in a position to be able to uh, to get my ideas across. So let me start uh, using and uh, to try to communicate my ideas in an ineffective way, and let's see how that goes. 
Alex, I'd like to hear your ideas about how to revamp HR training. Would you like to maybe look into AI-based training? That's a really good idea. I've seen some AI demos at trade shows. Alex, why do you think it would make such a difference? Personally, I think AI is really cool. We should look into it. Uh-huh. I've been hearing about using AI in training. Travis, what kind of demos have you seen at trade shows? I've tried several, but the one I liked best was where I could role play scenarios with an avatar and get feedback on what I said. We can deploy this for way cheaper than sending all the branches for live HR training. Great. What's our next step? Would you like to maybe set up some meetings? Yeah, that sounds like something to look into. Travis, you met a lot of these companies. Bring me some of those leads. There are a couple of local companies that would make good partners for this. I'll make some calls and set up some meetings. Thanks, Travis. Just put them on my calendar. Sounds good. And Alex, I'll get back to you about this. Good meeting. So let's see how well I did. So it's calculating my score now. And it did, I did pretty poorly. So um, I, and let's, so I got an overall mastery score of 25%. So before we, we dig into this a little bit, I'll sort of explain the metrics that we're uh, calculating here. So um, the number of objectives, which in this case is uh, did I communicate each element of the delivery structure? Um, my use of language, was it persuasive enough or not? And also the number of conversational turns per minute. And and reason why we want to look at this is we want to make sure that people are getting to a point where they're actually They've practiced enough so they are comfortable in this type of, of conversation. So we look at data of how um, students at different levels are, are able to communicate, and we want to make sure that they're get, they practice enough so that the terms per minute gets into an appropriate range. And then that goes into the overall uh, mastery score calculated from that. We're also um, calculating the time spent we want to look at overall how much time and effort students are spending uh, practicing on this, and are they improving their skills over time? So, so if to I look, can just add please, something to that, Lois. Sorry. Um, so, if you look at the different components of what we're actually scoring, two earlier points. If you're just memorizing persuasive language. I can, I know, we should, and, and that's not going to be enough to be an effective communicator. At the same time, if you're looking at turns per minute, that's related to fluency. If you are not expressing yourself fluently, that also is not going to be effective. And if you think about the objective, if you're not achieving what the goal is, that also is useless. So. What Alelo is trying to do here is to look at all the different elements that lead to effective communication. Fluency, the language, how yeah, you achieving objectives and creating the overall mastery score based on that and not just one of those elements. Right. So if we look at how well I did, okay, so I was able to mention the idea of using AI-based training. Uh, I didn't do a good job of describing the benefits, um, and I didn't articulate what the, what the next step should be uh, very well. Um, and I didn't make good use of persuasive language. So I was phrasing things tentatively as questions like, you know, maybe would you like to set up a meeting? And so those all counted into uh, the persuasive language score. Uh, I have a choice at this point. I could, uh, it has selected some exercises that I could um, practice on to, um, to get better, for example, improve uh, use of persuasive language, or I can uh, replay the conversation. But generally, we would, we would recommend that you go through the practice exercises first because those are personalized to areas that 
you have weaknesses in. But following that, one can and should go back to replay the conversation, not just one time, but numerous times, because as we pointed out, you can try out different language every single time. So what we have done is to um, use natural language processing technology basically to recognize the intended meaning of each utterance that the, um, the learner is uttering and recognize elements of structured arguments to evaluate whether the argument has coherence. And then evaluate the manner of language use. In this case, uh, the, the persuasiveness of the language. And we have a patent pending for this uh, new capability. And we developed this technology using what we call a data-driven approach. Basically, we're constantly collecting data from uh, learners using the system, and then we use that to retrain the models. So, for example, the examples that I just gave, those were all recorded, and um, we'll go back and look at those and understand, okay, why did the AI not recognize those particular delivery structures? And then there's an issue, then we can retrain those models. So, so this is, um, uh, a, as I say, a version that we're just launching. As more learners use it, we will um, collect more data and um, be able to demonstrate improved uh, performance. We've actually developed a methodology of constantly testing and evaluating uh, the performance of the AI as well as the, um, the performance of the learners in interacting with the uh, simulations. And uh, I published an article in the Journal of AI and Education uh, this year about this approach. If you're interested in finding out more, uh, I refer you to that. So this approach um, is, is not just limited to persuasive communication skills. Um, it can be used to create AI simulations that can target particular business functions or particular professions that require uh, good communication skills. Um, and it also can be used for courses for the global English market. And I can see from our attendees today that, that many of uh, are for people from around the world and we can say from experience that this approach has been particularly beneficial for um, people around the world who want to learn English well enough to be able to use it in an English-speaking workplace. And what are the things that we see from that? We, we, we see reports that these learners gain self-confidence. Um, they're able to learn efficiently because they are able to focus on the particular areas where uh, uh, they need to improve. We also see that this improves classroom training because learners come to class better prepared. So, so this can be used very effectively as part of a blended learning solution uh, that students practice more on their own and, and their time spent in the classroom is more efficient. I'll uh, just to add, uh, just to add, Lewis, that I think if any of you on the um, webinar are working in a business or corporate setting, this type of simulation can be used both from a recruitment perspective to understand how someone would function in a situation where strong communication skills are needed, as well as a learning and development situation. Um, so I don't want you to, to only think about the learning and development, but I'd also like you to consider that how this could be used in the recruitment situation. So uh, students can use it at convenience, they can practice at home, they can practice on their mobile device, and 
what uh, instructors using this technology tell uh, us uh, is that um, it helps improve their classes, students develop more self-confidence, and also they say, well, gee, I wish I had this kind of platform when I was uh, a, a kid. So, and we can use this technology for you know, a range of different scenarios. So here's another scenario here. Um, this again is for sort of a, from an English language learning course. Uh, the student needs to buy a ticket at a, a train station. And so they need to engage in a conversation with the ticket lady in order to buy the ticket. And again, our technology supports you know, free form uh, communication. You know, say things like, hmm, I'm thinking of leaving on May 7th. What do you have available on that day? And then the AI can understand that and, and respond and engage in an ongoing uh, conversation. So just to reinforce this, this is different from something like uh, Siri or Alexa that can answer individual questions one at a time. This AI technology um, can simulate realistic conversations that it can extend over a lot of back and forth. And so can be used to simulate a range of different real world situations in which communication skills are important. So, so just to summarize what are the, the main features uh, that we've been focusing on and which we think are important in applying AI to communication skills, um, immersive simulations with AI avatars, uh, a spoken language interface so you can actually practice using your skills in face-to-face uh, -face, uh, communication, uh, realistic practice and feedback, um, personalized learning paths so each student gets the individual um, uh, learning guidance that they need, and then automatic, automated assessment and uh, performance metrics. And so this has a lot of benefits. Uh, learners develop their skills rapidly. Uh, it can be readily scaled to many trainees at low cost per trainee. It saves time, uh, results in better long-term retention, uh, and ultimately achieves uh, behavior change. So in terms of next steps, um, here are some possibilities that we'd like you to consider. First of all, we are making this uh, EPC course module available free of charge to organizations who are interested in trying it out. I think you will find it to be beneficial and it will help provide us uh, additional training data that we can then use to retrain and improve our AI models. And we're interested in feedback from you all on particular business functions and professions where you see a real need for better communication practices, communication skills, and then we can take that in consideration as we design uh, new modules for NSkill. So here is my contact information. Uh, this is the end of our presentation. Um, I'm happy now to take questions. So if you enter questions in the, uh, in the chat window in Zoom or the q and I'll monitor both of those, and I'll be happy to uh, uh, answer any questions that you might have. And while we're waiting for questions, Karen, can you think of any additional points that we should um, uh, bring up? Um, um, no, I, I think, though, I would invite people to think broadly about how simulations um, can be used. Um, as, as Lewis has pointed out, you know, this is a flexible platform that can be built for uh, different industries, uh, different applications. And so uh, we're very excited about the new um, 
improvements in the technology that we've been able to make at Alelo. And um, I think that this is something that's very powerful to use, as Lewis has said, whether it's for general communication training or specific um, industries where communication is um, important. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, thank everybody for um, participating during this hour. Uh, we will be, we are recording this. We will post this recording to YouTube and we'll let you know when that's available and uh, hope you'll share it with your colleagues. So thanks for now and hope to see you at a future uh, webinar at, on the future of AI in education and training. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.